Al said, it's Mundo and welcome. So it's 2019 and my goal this year is to upgrade my studio, especially when I have to record electric guitars. And I like to use real amps, but I have been using IRs. I like them, especially for solos. Sometimes I miss um, having a, a room sound, even though my studio is treated, but to really mic, crank an amp, and get that kind of three-dimensional thing. I kind of miss that for the rhythms. But that aside, my first upgrade of the year is an Oxbox by Universal Audio. Super, super happy about it. Although, full disclosure, I put the ox before the cart, the cart before the horse, the ox before the horse. I really should have got a Universal Audio uh, Apollo or Apollo Twin, and I will get that eventually, but I'm coming out of the ox using the monitors into my Apple G Duet, and it's working good. I just did a session, and the problem I had was... Uh, real-time monitoring but that's okay I went out of the speaker I have a speaker in the studio and um, filled the room cranked it, cranked the mp3 track out of my monitors and then uh, used headphones from the aux <laughs> headphones from the aux to hear hear that real-time modeling um, hey I recommend you check out guitar wank and the James Santiago version he's the guy that is the main head designer for this he really sold me on the Oxbox. They're not using the IR technology and they're not really using modeling technology. They're, they kind of discovered or made their own technology to fit their needs. So they use modeling, the word modeling, uh, kind of as a description, but it's not quite accurate. And I don't think they're telling, they want to tell everybody exactly how they did it yet, but uh, it sold me. So I did a session today. As I was setting up the Oxbox, uh, two days ago, I was asked to do this session so I thought it was a perfect perfect chance to get my feet wet um, I'll talk about sessions more later at some point if you'd like they're not always glamorous they're always fun but I'm not doing record dates but I'm I'm working a lot as a session guitar player and this session was for a composer and he is commissioned to write a song for a big project and before they go full steam ahead and record it they do a spec recording and he thought it needed guitar and so he called me has to be a fast rush job and uh, there'll be more discussion later if I'm involved in the recording process but right now he's just said go have fun anything will work so it was the perfect time for me to use the Oxbox and boy for me not being the greatest uh, guy at setting things up it was super easy I went through Oxbox into my Friedman Dirty Shirley got the cabinet on the speaker out um, if you're not using the iPad you do get I think six modeling yeah six rigs and um, they sound good but I really like this because uh, using the iPad just having an on-screen on -screen display was awesome um, let's see I did the rhythm just now and I kind of messed with the uh, access room is bold I, I didn't want to change much of the um, rigs I wanted to hear how they sounded and how they printed and if it was great especially for rhythm I didn't need to hear the speaker in the studio and um, I just used my cans and cranked it out of the, the monitors if you use an Apollo twin with their with the way they run it you take a uh, spit if into your Apollo twin and from what I hear there's zero latency and you'll be able to just track in real time um, that'd be great there is latency latency using my Apogee duet but I would just mute it and uh, listen to the Oxbox through the cans. So kind of a backwards way, but it works if you don't have a Apollo interface. Uh, getting back to the Ox app, it was fantastic. You can see how there's mics, you could choose mics. This is really nice that you have the high pass filter. Um, I, I almost want to leave it off and then add the high pass filter afterwards because it's still, leaving it off really <laughs> felt more real or like I was pushing air. Uh, today I, I was asked to play on a like a Pink Floyd-y kind of song and kind of be a little like David Gilmore and uh, so I ended up not really sounding like them but I used I used their um, where'd it go another Brickish Council amp squash and um, uh, it's changed back because I didn't save it but I actually didn't use the direct that was part of it I, I found uh yeah, I use a, a 57. 
And then, oh, I went to a cabinet and I used this 4x12 greenback 25 thick. They said if you drive the speaker, which I ended up doing, it would break up on the high end. I really didn't get that, but it, it felt great. I was also pushing air. I, um, I did use the cans at one point. I pushed the speaker volume up and cranked these up and it was fantastic. I, I, I think that was a take I ended up using. Fantastic, fantastic first upgrade of 2019. I'll let you know when I get the Apollo. And um, there's a lot more technical videos you can see, but to use this as a reactive load and go straight to the computer is great. Also having the, the through to the amp is great. And also, um, I took a video, I don't know if I'll include it, but there was a gardener blowing his air blower across the street and it was so loud, I couldn't mic a cabinet if I wanted to. It, it would have given it almost another 60 cycle hum. So um, yeah, I'm really, really excited about this. That's my user experience with this. And if you got any questions, shoot them my way. If you like my videos, please subscribe. And uh, until next time, aloha. Getting ready to record and this happens often. Is he doing yard work or blowing the cement? Either way, he's making noise. Couldn't do a vocal session. Can't do an acoustic session with mics, but I can do this session today with real amps, yes.